Our plan for sorting a list has two stages. First, we take a large sorting problem and decompose it into smaller and smaller problems. Second, we take the small sorting results and combine them into larger and larger results. Let's design the second stage first. For the second stage, we can simply follow the design recipe. We already have the data definitions we need, so let's move on to the signature. Let's call this function merge tree result. It takes a merge tree and returns a sorted list of numbers. The signature doesn't say that the result list is sorted, so let's emphasize that in our purpose statement. Now for some examples of this function. It helps that we already have examples of merge trees from MT0 to MT3. Remember that whenever we design a function, we need to give examples of every possible kind of input and every possible kind of output. The input is a merge tree, so let's write at least one example where the input is single and at least one example where the input is split. The output is a list of number, so let's write at least one example where the output is m t hmm. There seems to be no way for the output to be empty. So I guess all the examples will be ones where the output is counts. Next, we need to write the template. Actually, y'all already did that. Here's the template for processing a merge tree, and we just need to fill it in. In the single case, we can refer to this example. This tells us that we just need to take that single number and put it in a list. This is one of those rare occasions where it makes sense to use list abbreviations in a function definition. Now, in the split case, what we have available from the template are two sorted lists, and we need to combine them into an overall sorted list. Well, that's a function that you wrote last time, it's merge. Let's use merge. All right, now we can test our code. Great. So the second stage is done. Let's move on to the first stage. So we want a function called generate merge tree that, given a list of numbers, will generate a merge tree by splitting any list longer then one element into half. Let's write some examples. Again, it's convenient that we have examples of merge trees lying around from MT0 to MT3. Remember that decomposing a single element list, like list 8, is how we get a merge tree like MT0. As you can see in these examples, they correspond to how we drew the picture before for decomposing our example list. Now, we don't want to follow the template for processing a list. In this template, we have two cases, empty and cons. But we don't want to think about these two cases. Instead, we want to think about lists that are one element long and lists that are longer than one element. Also, this template tells us to decompose the rest of the list, but we don't want to decompose the rest of the list when we decompose a list. We want to decompose smaller lists like the first half of the list and the second half of the list. So that's why we don't want to follow this template. We are going to diverge from this template, and that's a little bit risky, and that's why we're doing it this late in the semester after you've already mastered following the usual mechanical processing template. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to distinguish between two cases again, but the two cases are when the list is one element long and longer. So how do we test if the list is one element long? Well, we could see if the length of the list is one. There are other ways, but this is clear enough for now. Or maybe the list is not of length one. If the list has length one, then we do know that we need to do something with that single element in the list. So let's write that for now. That single element can be selected with first ln, if the list is not of length 1, how can we get at 
the first half and the second half instead of this rest of the list, which we don't really care about. Well, here's where another function from last time is useful. If we want the first half of the list, we can just take, well, how many? It's going to be, well, this is the length of the list. So if we divide it by two, that's going to be half the length of the list. And then we better make sure that's an integer. So I'm going to use floor on it. So this is the merge tree generated from the first half of the given list. Similarly, we can use drop to get to the second half of the given list. So we can generate the merge tree from that. And once we have these two merge trees, we can just use make split to build a larger merge tree from these existing merge trees. And if we have a single element list, we can just use make single to build that merge tree. Okay. This function, as we've written it, really doesn't look like it's following a list processing template. The most glaring thing that I want you to notice is that this function makes recursive calls, but the recursive calls don't follow the list processing template. The recursive calls don't take an input like the rest of ln. Instead, they take this funny input like take and drop uh, that wouldn't appear in a list processing template. The list processing template doesn't even know about functions we wrote like take and drop. So that's really risky because maybe this function does not terminate on all inputs. Maybe there's some inputs that make this function not stop and that will make our whole program never terminate and that will be not the result we want from a sorting program. So let's keep that risk in mind. I'll come back to it in a minute, but for now, let's test our code. Ah, better put another parenthesis there. Okay, we seem to be done with the first stage as well. So now we could combine the two stages to sort a list. Here's how that would go. We would start with the list. We would generate a merge tree from it. This is an example that's already on the screen. And then given that merge tree, we can kind of read off the result. And there we have it, the sorted list. Let's put that in a function. Let's call this function merge sort. As usual, we need to give examples that are of all kinds. So sorting an empty list should give us an empty list. And if we sort this non-empty list, we should get the sorted result. And this function is going to be pretty simple because all we need to do is to do what we did in the interactions window, except instead of doing it on, on some particular list, do it on LON. Okay, this is what we mean by decomposing a sorting problem in a creative way. We're using generate merge tree, which does not follow the list processing template to produce a merge tree. And then by processing the merge tree with merge tree result, we get the sorting result. Let's try this out. This is not working. Some of you may have seen this problem before. This problem happens exactly when we've not followed the processing template. Well, indeed here, we're not following the processing template. What's the problem? Well, it turns out that generate merge tree is indeed a function that might not terminate. There's a way to make this function not terminate. Do you see it? If we give it the empty list, 
if ln were empty, then this first condition will be false. So we'll go to the second condition. But in the second condition, we'll take the first half of the empty list and also the second half of the empty list. And both of these lists are empty. So we're going to end up splitting an empty list into two empty lists. And that's going to become four empty lists and eight empty lists and so on. And it's never going to stop. So thanks to our test for sorting an empty list, we ended up testing the generate merge tree function on an empty list. And even though the generate merge tree function has a signature that promises it can take any list of numbers, it doesn't really work on the empty list of numbers. So this tells us two things. First, we should change the signature and purpose statement of generate merge tree so that it is no longer allowed to give the empty list to generate merge tree. Let's change it to non-empty list of numbers. So this is saying that it is now the caller's fault. If anyone were to call generate merge tree and give it the empty list, it's their fault for giving something that generate merge tree has a signature that disallows. Okay, so that's one thing. Another thing, though, is we should really think harder about whether our function always terminates. Why does this function always terminate? Basically because there's some sense in which the input always gets smaller when we make a recursive call. Here, there are two recursive calls, and we can look at how many elements are in the list passed to the recursive calls. The number of elements could be half or a little bit more than half even. For example, if there are five elements in LN, then the first half is actually going to be the first two elements, and the second half is going to be the last three elements. So it is really thanks to the fact that the list is at least two elements that these recursive calls are going to receive shorter inputs. And we should write this down. Whenever we write any function that does not follow the processing template, we should write down why this function nevertheless always stops. This is called the termination argument. You have to do this whenever you write a function that does not follow the processing template. Why does this function terminate, even though it makes these strange recursive calls whose inputs are not just like the rest of the list? We have to say something like, when the list has at least two elements, recursive calls receive shorter lists. This part that says when the list has at least two elements is important because when the list has only one element or no element, the recursive calls would not receive shorter lists. So it's really thanks to this condition and this signature that this termination argument makes sense and assures us that the function is always going to stop. Whenever we make the recursive call whose inputs don't look like they're obviously going to get smaller due to the processing template. We are doing what's called generative recursion. Generative recursion is when we're making a recursive call and we're not following the template for doing so. That's in contrast to structural recursion, which is when we are following the template in our recursive calls. So generate merge tree is the first generative recursive function we're writing in this class. All right, now we need to fix merge sort so that it always terminates. Merge sort takes any list as input, but it can only call generate merge tree if the list is not empty. So let's put a special case for dealing with the empty list that's just, well, return the empty list, it's good enough. Okay, now we're ready to test the code again. And we have an implementation of merge sort. 